Okay, so with this parenthetical promise, we are going to take notes on the bottom of the page to show why using parentheses is so important. So I would like you to first off have a pen or pencil ready to take notes along with me. I tend to use a pen almost all the time when I'm doing this. I've learned over the years my document camera does not pick up pencil very well. So just because I'm using a pen does not mean you have to. So why is it so important to use parentheses? Well, we're going to evaluate the expression x squared minus 2x plus 3, where x equals negative 2. So let's start off here, writing negative 2x squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 3. On the right side, we're going to write this without the parentheses, and we will end up with negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 3. We are going to spend some time taking notes on the next example of what happens with parentheses and exponents and negatives, but right now I need you to trust me that this is very different from this. Because what we're squaring here is negative 2, because the negative 2 is in parentheses and that what's in the parentheses is what's being squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 would give us 4. I'm not sure why I'm seeing glue open. Glue should be closed, notebook should be closed, dry erase should be put away. We're taking notes right now. Negative 2 times negative 2 is another positive 4 plus 3. When I simplify the first line into the second line, on the other side of this, without parentheses, the big difference is in the very first action. Because here, the negative is not captured inside the parentheses with the 2. So what's being squared is the 2. And the negative stays in front of it. So that's negative 4. Minus 2 times 2, negative 2, would be another positive 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So you've already seen where the difference is. It's in that very first operation we did. We now have just addition and subtraction. So following order of operations, we're going to work left to right. On this side, I would have 8 plus 3. On this side, I would have 0 plus 3. Eight plus three is 11. Zero plus three is three. This is the correct answer. And this is the incorrect answer. With parentheses, we get a correct answer. I would like you to now set that to the side. And we're going to take notes on negatives and exponents. And see what I meant by that very first part of that last example. So I want to start this off today letting you know that what I'm going to show you is not something I want you to memorize. There are things in math that you need to understand why they work 
and have access to go and look them up. And as long as you know where to look to verify what you're thinking and why it worked, you don't have to memorize it. There are other things like using parentheses every time you input a number for something I want you to do all the time. But that's a practice versus a memorize. Do you guys feel the difference there? Yeah. On this paper, we're going to make a resource that is hopefully going to make something clear to you about why there's a difference. But then we're going to glue it in our notebooks so the notebook can contain the memory. And you'll just have access to be able to go see it again when you need to. Please know, I just am not the kind of math teacher that thinks you have to memorize the whole world of math. It doesn't make sense to. Okay? So we're going to start first. Um, I'm going to say I've used this worksheet for years to teach this. <clears throat> um, it was a PDF when I got it. And as you know, PDFs are not easy to edit. Every year I use it. I wish I'd gone back and found a way to edit it. Because I really wish these two columns were reversed. So we're going to start with this column first. <clears throat> What we have here would be written out as negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Where did I get the negative 1 from? Because there's a negative in front of this, and that means we're being multiplied by a negative 1. As you said, negative, anytime I multiply anything by 1, does it change it? If I have a negative number, it could, be, it could have been multiplied by negative 1. That's how we got it there, potentially. All right? <clears throat> this one would not be written that way. It would be written like this. Let me give you a minute to get that written down. Before I explain them, I want you to talk at your table. What do you notice is the difference between the two? Thank you to table four for talking to each other. Everybody, what do you notice is the difference between the two ex equivalent expressions? What we're going to write here starts with the word opposite. Opposite of 2 to the fourth power. I'm going to do something I did not do in third period to see if I can make this really clear. This is the opposite part. This is the base. And this is the power.
This one's meaning is just negative 2 to the fourth power. What's the difference in my two meanings? There's only two words separating it, aren't there? The negative is in front, and the words opposite of show up in the meaning. Do you see that the opposite of goes with the negative? Okay. Let's go to this one next. It could be written two ways. Honestly, all of these have a couple of different ways you could write them. No, my favorite pen is dying. I'm so sad. Go ahead and get that captured. What do you notice about what we just wrote in comparison to the other things we've written? Tell us. Has anybody else made the same observation as Kellen? These two are the same. The first and the third one are the same, aren't they? The meaning of them is exactly the same, too. This means opposite of 2 to the fourth power. What's different about them? these parentheses true? There's a parentheses around the two here that don't exist up here. Why would you have parentheses there? Well, picture us solving some bigger equation or expression. Maybe inside that parentheses, it used to say uh, 8 divided by 4 parentheses to the fourth power. And then you would simplify what's in the parentheses first and then multiply to the fourth power, right? So people might keep the parentheses to show that they took care of what was in them earlier, just as a way to note keep. Typically, we'd write it this way because we like our shortcuts in math, and why write more than we have to? But they mean the same thing. Okay, final one. This one has a big negative 1, and then I'm going to put a big parenthesis, mainly to fit it in here the best. It's the only reason to write these different sizes. This one's meaning opposite. Why opposite? Because what's in front of it? A negative of negative 2 to the fourth power. So, as we noted, 
The first and third ones are exactly the same. They just on the third one have parentheses added. The second and fourth ones are actual opposites of each other. Do you all see it now? Isn't it funny how once you learn things, you can see the same piece of paper slightly differently than when I first gave it to you? So now we need to know what to put in the value column. All four of these has four twos being multiplied together. What is going to be the key number that's in here? 16. Two times two times two times two. I know, I know you did. 16. We've got to figure out though, which of these are going to be negative 16 and which of them are going to be positive 16. I'm going to give you about three minutes to get to your boards and have a conversation with your team and decide what I'm going to write in those boxes to finish up our notes on this. So, to your boards, three minutes, go. Multiply it first, and then multiply this because of order of operations. Negative times negative would be positive, and negative times negative positive, leaving us with a positive. We have already established this is the same as this. And then finally down here, you would again do what's inside the parentheses first, which would end up positive, and then multiply it by the negative.